A peritoncillar abscess, often referred to as a Quincy, is a serious infection that develops in the tissues around one of your tonsils. Your tonsils are two oval-shaped pads of tissue at the back of your throat, one on each side. They're part of your body's immune system, helping to fight off infections. The space around these tonsils is called the peritoncillar area, and this is where the abscess forms. So, what exactly is an abscess? An abscess is essentially a collection or a pocket of pus that forms when your body's immune system tries to wall off an infection. In the case of a peritoncillar abscess, this pocket of pus develops between the tonsil and the wall of the throat. It's usually on one side only, though in rare cases it can occur on both sides. Peritoncillar abscesses are relatively common, especially among young adults and adolescents. They're most frequently seen in people between the ages of 20 and 40, but they can occur at any age. It's estimated that in the United States, there are about 45,000 cases of peritoncillar abscess each year. That might sound like a lot, but when you consider the total population, it's actually not super common. Still, it's frequent enough that most ear, nose, and throat doctors are very familiar with treating this condition. Causes of peritoncillar abscess. Most often, it starts as a complication of tonsillitis, which is an infection of the tonsils themselves. Typically, the bacteria that cause tonsillitis manage to penetrate deeper into the surrounding tissues, leading to the formation of an abscess. The most common bacteria involved are Streptococcus pyogenes, which is the same bug that causes strep throat, but other bacteria can be involved too, including anaerobic bacteria that thrive in low oxygen environments. There are several factors that can increase your risk of developing a peritoncillar abscess. Smoking is a big one. It irritates the throat and can make you more susceptible to infections. Poor oral hygiene can also play a role as it allows more bacteria to flourish in your mouth and throat. If you have a history of recurrent tonsillitis, you're at higher risk too. Some studies have also suggested that certain medical conditions that affect the immune system, like diabetes or HIV, might increase the risk. Symptoms of peritoncillar abscess. The symptoms usually develop over a few days and can be quite uncomfortable. One of the most noticeable symptoms is severe sore throat, typically on one side. This isn't just your common sore throat. People often describe it as extremely painful, especially when swallowing. In fact, the pain can be so bad that you might have trouble eating or drinking. Along with the throat pain, you'll likely have some swelling on the affected side. This swelling can be visible from the outside, making that side of your neck look bigger. Inside your mouth, you might notice that the soft part of the roof of your mouth, called the soft palate, is swollen and pushed towards the opposite side. Your uvula, which is that dangly bit at the back of your throat, might also be pushed to the side. The pain and swelling can make it difficult to open your mouth fully, a condition doctors call trismus. You might also notice that your voice sounds different, often described as having a hot potato quality because it sounds like you're trying to talk with a hot potato in your mouth. Other symptoms can include fever, chills, and generally feeling unwell. You might have bad breath, and some people experience ear pain on the same side as the abscess. Swollen lymph nodes in your neck are also common. Before we continue, if you have been finding the video helpful so far, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. Diagnosis of peritoncillar abscess. The first step in diagnosis is usually a physical examination. The doctor will look in your mouth and throat, checking for the characteristic swelling and displacement of structures like the soft palate and uvula. They'll also feel your neck for swollen lymph nodes. Just looking at the throat can often give a pretty good idea of whether an abscess is present. However, to confirm the diagnosis and locate the abscess precisely, the doctor might use a needle to attempt to draw out some pus, a procedure called needle aspiration. This serves two purposes. It confirms the presence of an abscess, as opposed to just cellulitis, and it can also be the first step in treatment by draining some of the pus. In some cases, especially if the diagnosis is uncertain or if complications are suspected, imaging studies might be used. A CT scan can show the exact location and size of the abscess, which can be helpful in planning treatment. Treatment for peritoncillar abscess. 
Once a peritonsillar abscess is diagnosed, treatment needs to happen promptly. The main goals of treatment are to drain the abscess, treat the infection, and manage symptoms. Draining the abscess is usually the first step. This can be done in a few ways. The simplest is needle aspiration, where a needle is inserted into the abscess to draw out the pus. Another option is incision and drainage, where a small cut is made to allow the pus to drain out. In some cases, particularly for larger or recurrent abscesses, a more extensive procedure called Quincy tonsillectomy might be performed, where the tonsil and the abscess are removed together. Alongside drainage, antibiotics are a crucial part of treatment. These are usually given intravenously at first, especially if the patient is admitted to the hospital. Common antibiotics used include penicillin or clindamycin, but the choice might depend on local patterns of antibiotic resistance. Once the patient starts improving, they can switch to oral antibiotics to complete the course of treatment. Pain management is another important aspect of treatment. Over-the-counter pain relievers like ibuprofen or acetaminophen can help, but stronger pain medications might be needed in some cases. Gargling with warm salt water can also provide some relief. In severe cases, or when there are complications, hospitalization might be necessary. This is more likely if you're having trouble swallowing liquids, if there are signs the infection might be spreading, or if you have other medical conditions that make outpatient management risky. After the initial treatment, most people start feeling better within a day or two, but full recovery can take a couple of weeks. During this time, it's important to stay hydrated, rest, and complete the full course of antibiotics, even if you're feeling better. For some people, especially those who have recurrent tonsillitis or repeated peritonsillar abscesses, the doctor might recommend a tonsillectomy, or surgical removal of the tonsils, to prevent future episodes. This decision is usually made on a case-by-case -case basis, considering factors like the frequency of infections and the patient's overall health. It's worth mentioning that while peritonsillar abscesses can be quite painful and potentially serious, they're generally treatable with good outcomes. However, if left untreated, they can lead to complications. The infection can spread to nearby areas, potentially leading to a deeper neck infection or, in rare cases, affecting the airway. This is why prompt medical attention is so important if you suspect you might have a peritonsillar abscess. So, remember, if you're experiencing severe throat pain, especially if it's one-sided and accompanied by fever or difficulty swallowing, it's important to seek medical attention promptly. Now we want to hear from you. Did you or someone you know have a peritonsillar abscess before? How was it treated? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.